Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be looking into the ever infamous and wildly powerful Pika Pika no Mi. The Pika Pika no Mi is a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate and become light. So already this is a fairly rare Logia because it doesn't subscribe to the typical elemental structure, but rather in this case allows the user to access a certain spectrum of electromagnetic radiation known as light. In any case, it was consumed by Borsalino, better known as Marine Admiral Kizaru, and it first took to the stage during the Sabadi Archipelago arc. The fruit takes its name directly from the Japanese onomatopoeia Pika Pika, meaning glimmering or shining. And yes, this onomatopoeia was also a direct inspiration for the most famous Japanese creature to have ever existed, Mr. Pikachu. However, as a result, the English translation had quite a job on its hands here as we don't have access to a large amount of short, snappy words to replicate this pragmatically. However, both Viz and Funimation did settle for the Glint Glint fruit. So diving right into this beast, as always with Logia fruits, it is important to highlight the aspect of intangibility. Should you try to punch or whatever, a user of the Pika Pika no Mi, it will probably be even more ineffective than usual because the affected area will simply dissipate into light, which is not really well known for being able to be touched in any way. I mean, yes, it does technically touch you by bouncing off your body, but not in any particularly useful way to any opponent of the Pika Pika no Mi. Of course, this does not work the same way in reverse, and the user of the fruit can manipulate light to the point where it certainly does become a tangible force to be reckoned with. One common devastating example of this is the ability to fire a focused beam of light mimicking a laser of sorts, but with the potential to cause explosive damage on impact, as well as your classical clean shots. Furthermore, the user of the Pika Pika no Mi, as with most Logia users, can fashion objects out of light that they can physically interact with, such as swords. And of course, they can most certainly interact with whatever unfortunate soul they are pit against. But arguably the most useful invocation of the fruit is the basic art of travel, as the wielder of the Pika Pika no Mi has been said to be capable of traveling at the speed of light, but I want to temper this thought right here, right now. The One Piece world does not subscribe to real world physics, so this can be quite a dangerous statement if we think of it in relation to the speed of light as we know it, which you know, if you were to be capable of achieving such a feat, would let you travel around our globe seven and a half times within a single second. The user of the Pika Pika no Mi does not have this capability, and if they did, this would be by far the most broken devil fruit in the entire series, no contest. As for exactly how fast the user becomes, well, it's pretty difficult to quantify based on a fictional story about pirates, but let's go ahead and say that it's pretty damn fast. Certainly enough to make the user the fastest natural existence in the world. Which sounds pretty awesome, yeah? Well, we do need to remember that this speed also comes with one pretty massive weakness, which is that light can only travel in a straight line, unless it is reflected or refracted. And this is a much bigger problem than it may sound, because you've all of a sudden lost any decent sense of being able to move around freely whilst in your super duper light mode. So if you're planning on traveling this way, you'd best be damn sure that your trajectory is spot on, because otherwise you could end up extraordinarily far away from your destination, and even worse if you don't take into account a rogue reflection along the way. And this also goes towards combat as well, because traveling in a straight line is restrictive enough in casual use, but if you want to use this in an actual fight, then uh, I don't like your chances, at least not as an inexperienced user. The learning curve for the Pika Pika no Mi is incredibly high, and if an inexperienced individual were to use this, then honestly, I don't even think that your opponent would need to worry too much about dodging, because you're pretty unlikely to hit them with your super straight trajectory and super speed combination that will have you traveling so fast that you won't have any time to think about where you're going. Although should you land an attack, then it would be absolutely devastating, especially if you significantly increase the force of an attack by transforming part of your body into light and thus using it to propel another, such as a punch or a kick, essentially allowing you to strike your opponent in the One Piece world equivalent of the quote unquote speed of light. And look, I mean, that's another reason why we know it can't possibly be the speed of light because multiple characters in the series have been struck by this speed. And not only were they not completely eviscerated from all of existence, but they suffered no long-term ramifications at all, as if it were just sort of some mildly powerful kick. But don't get me wrong, attacks using this fruit are still absurdly powerful, just not quite as powerful as its user states. So speaking of, let's jump into Mr. Kizaru's use of the fruit, and I have to say that he is entirely competent, perhaps even an exceptional user of the Pika Pika no Mi. Although I do think it's a bit of a natural mismatch for this particular character due to how slowly he takes day-to-day -day life. This of course is done for both ironic and comic effect, but still I can't help but feel that someone with a quicker mind would make much better use of the fruit. With that said, Kizaru has held the fruit long enough to master it in his own way, with a prominent example of this being the strategy that he has developed for the rather annoying weakness of light only being able to 
travel in one direction. To combat this, Kizaru engages in a technique known as Yata no Kagami, whereby he crafts a pathway for himself by reflecting light off fairy surfaces until he finds himself at his desired destination. And I want to stress that this is a pretty maddening use of the fruit. Once again, your average user will not be able to engage in this sort of ability without some insane training and a fantastic mathematical as well as logic driven mind. And this is because you can't just fire a beam of light and hope that its reflections will get you where you need to be. You need to consider the initial angle of reflection as well as all subsequent angles. It's really not as simple as Kizaru makes it look. So while I do honestly think that the Pika Pika no Mi would likely find a more natural home with someone else, over the long course of his time with the fruit, Kizaru has become an exceptional wielder. Now getting into the whole topic of awakenings, Logias are traditionally difficult to speculate upon given the, uh, the, the nothing we know of their potential at the time of this recording. However, I am proud to report that there is actually a whole ton of potential for escalating abilities when it comes to light. Now right at the beginning I mentioned that the Pika Pika no Mi gives the user the ability to conjure, manipulate and become light within a certain limit of the electromagnetic spectrum. That limit of which I'm assuming is visible light. However, there is every chance that an awakened user of the Pika Pika no Mi would be able to access a wider range of that spectrum. And what I'm thinking of here in particular is ionizing radiation such as ultraviolet light, X-rays or even gamma rays. And if the awakened user of the Pika Pika no Mi was a particular type of dick, then they could purposely expose individuals to said rays, high doses of which could result in highly undesirable effects such as cancer and even death. Then of course, we also have the theory that an awakened Logia can permanently alter their environment. Like how we saw Punk Hazard altered by the Hia Hia no Mi and the Magu Magu no Mi. And now you might be saying to yourself, well, Grand Line Review, there's no place where there's permanent light in the world. And you, uh, you'd be wrong there. Because within this world, we have the ever strange existence that is any slobby. A location in which it is always daytime. Now, barring some sort of reasonable scientific explanation for this, which I can't think of, I will say that it's entirely possible that this phenomenon may be caused by an awakening of the Pika Pika no Mi. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a light human. Despite becoming an absolute beast after consuming this fruit, there are still some serious threats for you out there in the world. And first up, I'm speaking specifically about the Yami Yami no Mi. Now at face value, it may seem reasonable to assume that the Pika Pika no Mi would be the natural counter to darkness. However, where this idea falters is when we take into consideration that the Yami Yami no Mi is more about manipulating gravity via the creation of black holes, a phenomenon that light cannot escape. So if anything, the Yami Yami no Mi acts as the natural counter to the Pika Pika no Mi. And sadly, that's not all either because this fruit has a second potential counter in the less focused upon Mirror Mirror no Mi held by Charlotte Brulé. Because crafting mirrors would allow the user of that fruit to redirect your light based movements and attacks in whatever direction they see fit. Although in this case, it is very much down to the user of the fruit. For example, I don't see Brulé herself being capable of stopping Kizaru. However, give the Mirror Mirror no Mi to someone along the lines of Katakuri level of power, and now we're talking. However, on the bright side, most other Devil Fruit matchups are quite favorable, especially the Kage Kage no Mi, a fruit that is entirely reliant on shadows, and while well, light being light, a skilled user will have complete control over the size and shape of those shadows, thus significantly reducing the capabilities of that user. And you know what? In all of this talk, we've actually skipped over one of the most basic uses of the fruit, which is that at any time you can use your Pika Pika powers to simply blind people and then make a quick escape should you find yourself in an undesirable situation. And furthermore, we haven't really spoken about the basic utility of light. As the user of this fruit, for one, would never have to pay electricity bills for lighting specific needs ever again. And furthermore, should the user be more artistically inclined, then they can put that to great use in the realm of film and theater. As a lighting designer myself, this would easily be my number one choice of all Devil Fruits to consume in the series for that very reason. So this fruit is pretty ridic. What we have is a Logia, which is already simply incredible on their own, but a light Logia really does outshine much of its competition in the Devil Fruit world. By consuming this fruit, you will pretty much immediately become the fastest living being in existence. But there is a significant trade off. I've mentioned it a lot, but I'm going to say it one last time because being only able to travel in a straight line is a huge constraint and one that you are going to have to change your entire way of living to adapt to. That is, should you wish to travel or engage in combat with the Pika Pika no Mi. But if you can beat the learning curve, then the potential for this fruit is pretty spectacular. Certainly one of the best we've ever examined and one that I'm pretty keen on consuming myself. So all of you had best go and uh, go and find another fruit and who knows, maybe you'll find a nice consolation prize next week. And with that, we are going to commit the Pika Pika no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we'll be looking into quite an intriguing Paramecia held by one of the notorious members of the worst generation with the castly goodness that is the Shiro Shiro no Mi. 
If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel New World Review for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Pika Pika no me. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time. Pikachu, I choose you! Pee.